we'll start off with the pledge and the prayer. Do I have a council person? I'd like to ask you back there. Who wants to lead the prayer? I can lead the prayer. Give everybody a bow their head if you'd like to. In the name of God, the most gracious, most merciful. We come to you today asking you to guide this city council and protect all our cities, citizens, and our workers. Lord, please guide us as we go over deliberations of the city business today and make sure we do everything right and in order. All that you ask in your name. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands. One nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Let me apologize. The, the prayer was led by Mayor Pro Tem Michael D. Balls. And you know who I am. I'm Brenda. I'm sorry, Mayor Brenda Moore. I'm sorry. I forgot. Um, I'd like to say good evening again. Good evening. Good, evening. good evening. And this is a public meeting, and the audience is to ask to remain and be quiet and refrain from speaking, interrupting, and otherwise disrupting the meetings. Um, just a friendly reminder, all city council, everybody on the platform, those phones need to be on silent, please. Audience, I need your phones on silent. I still need a phone, so please don't let the phone go off. <laughs> Madam Clerk, roll call, please. Councilmember Lamar Sylvia. Present. Councilmember Williams. Present. Councilmember Bench. Present. Mayor Pro Tem Balls. Present. Councilmember Scherzer. Present. Councilmember Ostash. Present. Councilmember Flores is excused. Councilmember Copeland. Present. Mayor Moore. Present. We have eight members present and one absent. You have a quorum. Okay. Madam Clerk, do we have any announcements? I do have a couple announcements, mm -hmm. Mayor. Thank you. I um, want to remind everyone that your yard waste is collected on your regular trash day, and you must use separate yard waste containers. And if you need a sticker, a yard waste sticker, they're available in the city clerk's office during regular business. Also, the City Waste Convenience Station is open the second Saturday of the month from 8 o'clock a.m. until noon. And city residents who wish to dispose of large, bulky materials are encouraged to utilize this service. Items that can be dropped off include recyclables, building materials, furniture, trash, etc. The station will be open this Saturday, May 14th. And Mayor, we have a proclamation on our, our agenda is declaring May 9th through the 13th of 2022 as Public Service Recognition Week. Thank you, Madam Clerk. The, the proclamation will be read by Council Person Autumn Surgeon. Huh? Oh, I need for, because it is, I don't know if all five unions are here. But if you'd like to come to the podium, your president, your vice president, however, if you like to come up to the podium. City of Saginaw Proclamation. Whereas Americans are served every day by public servants at the federal, state, county, and city levels who supply continue, continue, continuity to our democratic society. These unsung heroes do the work that keeps our nation working. And whereas public employees serve in areas such as public safety, elections, human resources, finance, and budget, environment, public infrastructure, community services, human rights, recreation, and more. And whereas the public employees of the city of Saginaw are committed to exhibiting the highest standards of professional excellence, creativity, skill, and customer service. And whereas the dedicated citizens who serve on City of Saginaw boards and commissions are integral to the advancement of the, of the quality of life that we enjoy here. And whereas the efficiency of government relies on public employees who provide services in the quality and quantity required and expected by the public. 
Without these public employees at every level, continuity would be impossible in a democracy that regularly changes its, leader, changes its leaders and elected officials. And whereas the city of Saginaw recognizes the generous contributions of time and talent by public employees and community volunteers and the importance of the services they render. And whereas though the work and efforts of public servants are specially recognized this week, the city of Saginaw remains grateful each and every day. Now, therefore, be it resolved, I, Brenda F. Moore, Mayor of the City of Saginaw, do hereby proclaim May 9th through the 13th, 2022, as Public Service Recognition Week in the City of Saginaw and urge all citizens to recognize and express their appreciation for the important contributions of public employees and community volunteers through the city, county, state, and nation. In witness whereof, I have hereunto set my hand and caused the seal of the City of Saginaw to be affixed this ninth day of May in the year of our Lord, 2022. Signed, Brenda F. Moore, Mayor, City of Saginaw, Councilpersons Michael D. Balls, Mayor Pro Tem, Annie Bench, George Copeland Jr., Michael Flores, Monique Lamar Silvia, Bill Ostash, Autumn L. Scherzer, and Reggie Williams II. Also by Timothy Morales, the City Manager. Just come and then we'll handle. Congratulations. I you I shake. I shake. All righty, all righty. Appreciate your work. I, in my mind, I was like, continuity. And I'm like, continuity. <laughs> okay, don't sit down yet. Don't sit down yet. Excuse me. Excuse me. <laughs> We're sometimes said that we don't tell you how we appreciate you. Right. So we really want you to know that we do appreciate you. Yes. You know, and if I had a million dollars, I would probably be broke giving it to you. <laughs> However, <laughs> the best I can give you is a piece of paper. So if one of you would like it, each one of you would like to say a few words, feel free. You know what? <laughs> Thank you very much, Mayor. Yes, thank, thank you. you. You're welcome. You're so welcome. <laughs> Madam Clerk. Mayor, we are at public input. I'd like to welcome all of those who have signed up to address the uh, council tonight. Please speak slowly and clearly so that we don't miss what you're saying. <clears throat> when you're asked to come up to the podium by the clerk, you will have three minutes limit, which will be timed by the clerk. Be sure you cover your main point. Remember to be courteous, respectful to the members of the public and to the, and to the viewers on SGTV and, then, and to the council so that we can give serious consideration to your concerns. Thank you, Madam Clerk. First on our list is Ahmed Keels. Ahmed Keels. Okay, let's go to Audrea Gibson. Let's try Sierra Jones. That's strike three. <laughs> How about Gary Beckert? Gary is here. <laughs> Good evening, Council, City Manager. Good evening. Uh, first off, I'd like to thank Councilman Otash and Flores, who isn't here, and City Manager and Darren Jerome on some problems with 1203 Stevens on cleaning it up. I appreciate that. But I'm here uh, about the uh, land bank lot at 1122 Stevens, the resident at 1112 Stevens last fall apparently tore a shed down and just flipped the roof off over into the land bank lot and then took all the leaves from from the whole block and blew them in there which so all winter we had a problem with with leaves blowing across the entire driveway which gets kind of annoying I got a back I piled put a pile of snow at the end of the fence that solved that till it melted until one day the resident called the city police and they threatened to take me to jail for dumping snow between the curb and sidewalk 
but I think that's a different problem for a different time. But anyhow, we called the land bank three weeks ago. Actually, I didn't call them, I sent an email. I think the city manager and inspections got a copy of it, requesting permission to go over and clean it up and drag, I thought it was pallets before, that's before I realized it was a roof, to drag it out the road and either have the city pick it up so they can just stop at the curb and make it quick and convenient and clean all the leaves up and just put them out with my trash. As of yet, the land bank has refused to even get back with me. And, you know, we've also put in a request to buy a lot at 821 Stevens, or 821 Bond, which is on the other side, which the same resident was dumping on, and she blamed the neighbor next to her, because now when she found out, I put, in, put a request in to buy it after seven years of her using it and no interest. Now she wants to buy both of them. But if you're using them without permission or dumping on them, you're not eligible to buy them from the land bank. And it says also if you're behind on your taxes, they haven't paid their trash tax, which apparently the land bank only cares about taxes owed to the county, not the city. Which it seems if you owe any taxes, you know, if you can't pay your $220, $30 trash tax, how are you paying $350 for two lots? Is my line of thinking anyhow. But it's like I say, I really appreciate what what you guys have been doing to help us on that, but the land bank's really failing on us, you know. I mean when you offer to clean it up and and I know it's talking with some friends in Heritage Square, they're having problems over there with the land bank too. But, you know, and I've got a bit of best interest. Our family's operated a business in town here since nineteen twenty. We got we got a little vested interest in the city and keeping it nice. So thank you. Thank you. You thank you. Madam Clark. Next on our list is Ed Connolly. Okay. See him? Let's go to Felicia Hogan. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Um, to Madam Moore, Pro Tem Mayor Michael Balls, and uh, City Manager Tim Morales. My name is Felicia Hogan. Uh, I'm here to address a matter of uh, sidewalks being broken and damaged from a city tree and uh, the removal of a tree on private property. I just want to share uh, the letter that was written to refresh your memory when I was here the, the first time. Um, I would also like to say in the beginning that uh, the notice from the engineering department uh, disclosed a telephone number that was not accurate for uh, the Michigan Tax Tribunal, of which I've gotten a negative response back from them. So I'd like to begin with the letter that was written regarding 15 sidewalks damaged full width of the property of 55 feet across due to a grown tree on city property known now as 2022 single lot special assessment. As owners of 3419 Robert Street, Saginaw, Michigan, since uh, September 2011, that's 11 years, and have been paying over the years for the removal of city tree roots growing into the dwelling's uh, drainage system, and also cracking and breaking uh, the sidewalks across the width of the property. 
We've never received any compensation for this problem and we never requested uh, for any compensation. So over an 11 year span, the apron of the driveway is raised up from pretty high uh, May I, I never please thought have I'd more do this, time. but I motion to give her 45 more seconds. There's a motion on the floor. I need a second. Second. It's been moved and second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed? Just one minute, Ms. Hogan. Okay. Okay. Okay, so 13 sidewalks are all broken. Uh, and cracked 55 feet across the width of the property. Um, the city has cut down a full grown tree on private property located on the side of the dwelling, uh, providing shade from the sun. And it, the tree is 50 feet from the street. The city of Saginaw cut every branch off a beautiful tree and left the tree trunk erect. I did go back uh, recently only to find that the, tr the tree had been- Your time has expired. Grounded. May I please have, may I please continue? Your time has expired. It was extended once. You could only have it extended, Ms. Hogan, one time, and he extended for 45 seconds. That's why okay. I say in the beginning, let's try to get everything in that you want us to hear. Yeah, well, three minutes is, is, is I understand, Mayor, uh, but sometimes there are issues that you can't condense in a three-minute period. This is a matter that I've brought before the council once before, uh, I believe in March, and uh, it, it, our request to have the- I'm sorry, Mayor, her time has expired. All right. Okay. Please consider my consideration on that we uh, will. property assessment. We will. The next speaker on the list is Courtney Smothers. Uh, I will first like to start with I have the 13 copies of the topic uh, that I'd like to discuss today, which would be the non-owner occupied dwelling fee. Who do I have these? Yeah, I would have needed those prior to the meeting, oh, but thank you. Hello, ladies and gentlemen of City Hall. My name is Courtney Smothers. Today, I'd like to briefly discuss the non-owner occupied dwelling late charge. An unprecedented late charge amount of 100% of the initial fee. Not one business, court, or even banking institute has 100% late fee. This is very much playing over the top. Some changes need to be made. And I would like the matter reviewed, revised, and rendered to a reasonable fee. This is a very discouraging for homeowners. The things we have to put up with the city of Saginaw, um, I want to encourage the youth to purchase homes and have stability in their life um, because of opportunities here for upstarts to be more easier than other places. I now second that and uh, because of some of these issues, I'm looking to invest in other prominent investments without so many hidden fees. I do take responsibility of having a late fee myself. Um, I, feel for home, I feel for homeowners, young, old, and disabled, with the threat of losing their house left and right from the city of Saginaw. Personally, it's damaging and it's discouraging. The city is this building, but the city are the homeowners also. We make up a lot of percent of the city a city that doesn't have much but a few houses. We don't make a lot off these houses. Um, 
like I said, the point of this matter is we need 100% of initial late fees knocked down to some reasonable. I never in life seen 100% of an initial late fee, which I take responsibility of having one myself. People are not fortunate and blessed enough to jump up and spend $1,100 at the drop of a dime. I didn't want to have to be the one to come up here and talk, but my money is involved now, so I have to say something. Um, that's pretty much it. Uh, yeah, and it's a lot of money because I have multiple properties. So how do we go about getting this situation back on the ballot to be Push forward, do I have to encourage more homeowners to come in? Just somebody let me know what I have to do. Because I don't want to come down here and pay a charge that was once 150 to turn to eleven hundred dollars. You will get a response if you haven't already you you will get a response. I paid the fee. So now okay, I'm But you still get future. a response because you came in front of us. Okay. Okay, how do, where do I look for that at? It'll come through the mail if we've got your address and stuff. Thank you, Mayor. You're welcome. Thank you. Next on our list is Yvette Morris. Yvette Morris. Final on our list is Tyrone Damon. Tyrone Damon. Well, Mayor, that takes us to remarks of council. Okay, we were council persons. You have three minutes as well. Uh, we will begin tonight with Councilman Copeland. All right. Good evening, everyone. Um, happy belated Mother's Day to all of our mothers here. I um, hope you all had a great day of celebration. Um, those who um, I'm just thankful for mothers, just the natural born nurturers. It's a gift. So I'm thankful for our mothers. Um, I do want to say, um, I don't want to know to say congratulations or thank you uh, to officers Brad Hope, Roger Pate, Casey Stabler, Brandon Jeb, and Jordan Bailey, along with MSP Trooper Roy and Saginaw Fire Department Battalion, uh, Battalion Chief Jim Foreman on, I was reading an article, it just popped up on my Facebook page about them, a situation about a 50 year old. A resident on a bridge and how they work together to save that resident's life and I think that has to be well we did it today with this recognition but I definitely wanted to make sure to mention that um, because that was amazing to read um, one I enjoy watching the show um, fire it's, it's on TV um, that's one of my favorite shows Chicago fire Chicago PD and all that but just to see that here in our community how hard they're working thank you all for saving that uh, resident's life um, I also want to share that there is Saginaw CAC is giving away babies diapers and pull-ups up until 4T every Monday from 1 to 3 p.m. So if you're a Saginaw resident and diapers are expensive, I'm buying them for two. So I don't know if there's a, a, a price because I may be riding up myself, but um, if, if for our Saginaw residents, if you do need diapers and pull-ups and wipes and rash cream, stop by Saginaw CAC on Mondays from 1 to 3 p.m. And great job to the Cinco de Mayo Parade Celebration Committee. Um, I had a chance to help out in the beginning and get the parade set up. And it was just an amazing just to see the love, the celebration. They had worship. It was just amazing. And I just love to see the happiness in the city. So looking forward to the next party uh, that we're having in the city. Um, but that's all I have for you. Have a great day. And I hope we can get out early just to enjoy some more of this weather. <laughs> that's all. Next, we have council person Sylvia. Ooh, good evening. How's everyone? So glad to see your sunshiny faces. And um, I'd also like to um, commend uh, the persons uh, that uh, were responsible for the Cinco de Mayo. Of course, I was in that parade, and there was a really big, giant, giant, awesome part of that parade. If you missed it, can't tell you about it. <laughs> anyway. It, 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 it was awesome. It was awesome. Also, the help formation for you uh, on yesterday evening, 
uh, their uh, persons put on a beautiful, beautiful uh, health information uh, fundraiser on um, last night. Myself, a couple other uh, council persons were there. It was beautiful. They gave away a thousand dollar scholarship. Uh, and this uh, promotes awareness in regards to sickle cell anemia. If you're not um, informed about that, look it up. Uh, it, it's awesome, a $1,000 scholarship uh, for a young person to uh, complete and attend college. Uh, also, CAC, I did want to uh, kind of get on back of that. Those diapers are up to size four, and it's only on Monday, only on Monday. Um, and it's been a success, and please utilize what our city uh, has. Um, that, that, that's really awesome. So that's all I have to say, and uh, happy belated Mother's Day to all the mothers, soon-to-be mothers. No, I'm just playing. <laughs> have a great day, and shout-out to our public servants. Oh, oh, and one more thing. I'm sorry. Streets. Whatever, whatever. I might be missing something, but... I, just like I get calls about, well, Monique, they need this. The trash is here and there. I also got calls in regards to, Monique, they got that up so quick. They came and did this. So shout out to you guys. I know we can't do everything in the matter of a few days, but shout out, shout out to streets and whomever helps in those particular areas. So things are going. We need people. The city of Saginaw is yet hiring. So come on and join the team. Have a lovely day. Next, we have Councilman Williams. Uh, good evening, everyone. I'll keep this uh, short. Uh, first, thank you to our speakers that did show up. I uh, appreciate your, your voice tonight. I uh, would also like to uh, give a huge shout out to Detective Graves, who is Saginaw Police uh, the Officer of the Year. Um, so congratulations, sir. Hi, uh, yes. Uh, I would also uh, like to say that I had a nice experience this weekend uh, at the Indigo Club, which is down, I believe, South Water, mm -hmm. I believe is the street. And that was my first time being inside, and it was, it was very nice. And what I would like to do uh, is encourage people to go to the Indigo Club, because it is a place to go, but I would like to encourage people my age to go. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I don't have anything against young folk, but hey, I, I want to be able to enjoy my time while I'm there. Uh, but it, it was a nice time. It's a beautiful establishment, and I think it's uh, one of those businesses that uh, deserves to be supported in, in Saginaw. Uh, so with that being, oh, and happy belated Mother's Day to all the mothers out there. Uh, but that's it for me, Mary. Thank you. Next, we have council person Bench. Double checking, it's me. It's me. <laughs> Sorry. Um, well, good evening to everybody, and um, I too will be brief. Um, but I do want to thank our public speakers who are here tonight. Um, Mr. Beckert, before the meeting, um, I didn't have an opportunity to come tr tell you directly, but the land bank manager um, responded one address you're concerned about that's owned by them, and they will be addressing it as soon as they have an opportunity tomorrow. <laughs> you can tell him, right? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I don't want to repeat myself, but but that should be dealt with. Um, he he did respond back before the meeting, um, and I too just want to add my um, uh, my praise to um, my colleagues that uh, uh, mentioned the the Cinco de Mayo festival and parade. It was a wonderful event, and very well done, and very uh, very welcome um, activity after the the two year hiatus. So. Mm -hmm. Um, I just want to say thank you to them for, people always say there are things for, for people to do in Saginaw, but I, I think there are a lot more um, than people realize, and we need to be grateful for those things, because I think we're fortunate to have, uh, have, have many of the amenities that we do, especially um, events like that. So that's all I have today. Thank you. Thank you. Next we have Council Person Scherzer. Sure, sure. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, first, I want to say I know continuity. I just couldn't process it. So, what my head was saying and what I wanted to say were not matching. So, I want to clarify that. Um, I, too, want to thank the public speakers, but especially uh, our public servants. I will and forever will be a champion for our police, our fire, and our unions, and everybody else that is in public service. Because we have uh, Battalion Chief Foreman who served the city for 25 years. 
Uh, we have uh, Officer Frazier is uh, Police Officer of the Month. Chief Ruth, 28 years of service with the Saginaw Police Department. Uh, we've lost uh, Brad Tony Melcher, who served 28 years, shot in the line of duty, and came back to be an officer in the police department. Detective Graves, you're the officer of the year. Uh, so we don't take uh, what you do for granted and just know, especially from myself, but I'm sure from my colleagues, as you know already, sometimes it's a thankless job, but at the end of the day, you know what's, what it's worth and you're going home and making a difference in all of the cities your lives, the people you work with, who you interact with, and definitely for our citizens. So thank you is just doesn't seem enough, but for now that's the best I can give you for now. Uh, reminder that roll call uh, is May 24th from at 6 p.m. at Mackinac Place. So please come out. They are still looking for sites, so if you are interested in hosting, I'm sure reach out to the chief or he'll connect you with the right person to get that set up. And then... Uh, <coughs> In the, I want to say Happy Mother's Day as well to everyone. I'm not a mother, but I have some figures and women that have been very influential in my life. So uh, hats off to anyone that's a mom, whether biologically or adopted. Uh, and then last but not least, please, I encourage everyone, as it gets warm out, um, the city was on fire this weekend, not burning, but in <laughs> other ways. And I mean, I could hear them from my house and I just couldn't believe the fact that it sounded like a war zone. Um, grab somebody and bring them in and mentor them, guide them in the right path, because the amount of violence that is happening needs to stop, and it's only gonna get worse if we allow it to get worse. So our community, we need to step up, and we need to make changes or provide a different option. And then also, please support small businesses, especially the ones right in our city. Uh, go buy an ice cream cone, take somebody out to eat. Uh, we have a lot of great food vendors here in the city. So I definitely want to just encourage everyone to remember your small businesses. We want to keep them here. That is all I have. Thank you. <clears throat> Next we have Councilman... Council... <laughs> Councilman... Oh, God. Oh, I'm sorry. I'll help you, Mayor. <laughs> hey, uh, well, I said last week, the last meeting. <laughs> so, yeah, she's right. I uh, was absent at the last meeting. I was recovering from an illness. Uh, but welcome, everybody. It's good to see our chamber uh, was full once again. And to everybody who's watching at home, thank you to our public speakers for coming out and sharing your thoughts with the council. Um, I'm just going to reiterate everything that my colleagues are saying right now. Officer Graves, congratulations to you. Congratulations to the help that everybody did for the woman on the bridge because she is now getting the, the help that she uh, desperately needs. Um, yeah, and thank you for everybody at the Cinco de Mile Parade. I had a great time. Um, it was a good event. It was a huge parade. I got a lot of sun. Uh, got a little sunburned even with the sunscreen on, but um, it was excellent. A great time. Um, Councilman... Reggie Williams, the Indigo Club. Uh, if you did not know, it's a local historic district. It's a single entity and it's protect, protected under our ordinance. So that's, uh, I'm glad you enjoyed that. Um, let me see here. Uh, people that are picking up trash, I've been telling, I've been getting some calls and people wanting to clean up their neighborhoods. So if you're listening right now, what I've been telling them is call the city manager's office. If you put your trash out to the road, uh, the manager has assured us that they will come and pick up all the bags and stuff that you are collecting. Uh, also, too, uh, one of the things that now that the warm weather is here, it's been kind of nice in our neighborhood. Uh, we've adopted a park, and so we've been taking care of the park and getting more sun out there doing that. But it's a lot of fun. And one thing that I did notice is that once we start, started uh, working in the park, it kind of brought all of the neighbors out. And so we can kind of now do it collectively. So I've got a chance to actually meet all my neighbors for a couple of blocks. So it's just a, been a lot of fun and a good experience for us all. Those forms are available on the city website, and you can also get them for call the clerk's office. If you can't find it, they can help you find that form. And speaking of trash, we talked about the land bank tonight, too, and uh, some of the work they've done um, or, or trying to do. I'm glad that you came and spoke to us tonight, Mr. Becker, because I have had some other calls come in from 12th Street, and it was just a phone call to uh, Tom Miller Sr., and he was able to get that taken care of the next day. So I am 100% confident that with Councilwoman Bench's remarks tonight that that will be addressed for you as well. 
Also, the Children's Zoo is open now again. I meant to talk about that at the last meeting. They're open from 10 to 5 until the beginning of October. Admission is $5, and it's $1 per person per ride. Uh, infants that are 11 months and younger are free to the park. And there is a big event coming up this weekend. It's going to be held at the Saginaw Club. Potter Street Station is doing a big fundraiser. It's called Raise the Roof. They've got information on their Facebook page, and there's also links on their Facebook page where to buy tickets. Tickets are available at the Antique Warehouse. They're also available at Dawn of a New Day. And they did get up a link to buy tickets online. Uh, tickets are $30, and the event is going to go from 8 <laughs> I, I like the motion to give uh, Council Oshkosh one minute. That's out of order. Is the only fine. one, due to our charter, the only okay. ones that can ask, we can ask for the public speakers, okay. not for us. Here it's Council right. Rules of Order. Council Rules of Order. Okay. I'm sorry. That is fine. No, you're fine. You're fine. Visit the Facebook page. <laughs> <laughs> or mine. Thank you. <laughs> Next we have Mayor Pro Tem Balls. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. I'd like to uh, welcome everybody here to the City Council meeting today, and I want to thank you for living in the city of Saginaw, working in the city of Saginaw, and trading in the city of Saginaw. I'd like to thank you all for that. Um, this week was a big weekend here in the city of Saginaw. Um, I did to attend the uh, Health Formation uh, concert that Mr. Washington and his wife put on to uh, raise awareness of sickle cells and help out with scholarships. The young lady that got that scholarship, she was, uh, the doctors told her that she may not live to be 18 years old. And the young lady has a uh, bachelor's degree and working on her master's degree. You know, he's able to give her a $1,000 scholarship, and I think that was real. And she's going into health field, too, so that's beautiful. Um, another thing that's uh, bothering me, and I'm sure it's bothering the rest of the people, the citizens in the city of Saginaw, and that's the youth, the wayward youth that we have in the city of Saginaw doing negative things to make our city look bad. And we're going to ask everybody again, like I'm going to do at least every other week, is to engage our youth. You'd be surprised on a small act of kindness that you can give to a youth and the big smile that it may put in their heart later on and make them think about something else before they actually act on it. Uh, one thing I found out about an act of kindness, not only do it make my heart big, but it makes the receiver big too. You know, it, it, it softens their heart. A lot of these kids are hard because of the way life has treated them, and they just need to be softened up a little bit more. And, and, and I can't think of any better way to do that than to engage them. You'd be surprised on how these kids respond once you engage them. Um, I'm looking forward to uh, getting with the mayor and the rest of the city council and other citizens of the city of Saginaw for our cleanup this week. So I'm really looking forward to that. Uh, and today we had a delegation from Ghana come here today to the uh, Saginaw Youth Development Corporation. And they want to do the same thing that we're doing with the uh, youth in, in Ghana. So they came here and they tapped Eric Elkerson's brain and the rest of us and asked us questions about how we're doing it. And they took a tour of our building. And they're looking forward to uh, partnering with us in Ghana to do the same thing with their youth. Uh, they're going to do a twist on this where they're going to take uh, a lot of people that's locked up in jail and do the same thing with the people that's locked up in jail. So hope they can give them some skills to be productive members in society. So uh, that's all I got to share. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Saturday, 8 o'clock. Clean up the city. We will be doing five areas on the west side, five on the east side, and neighborhood associations are kicking in. And so we're actually cleaning up. For those people who had comments or spoke about clean up, I've been talking about it, so now it is to coming into fruition. Yep. At 8 o'clock, we will meet here, and we will provide a light, light, mm -hmm. not no pancakes and eggs. We will have a light brunch breakfast for you. And then when you come back, we're only going to be out for two hours. When you come back, we're going to have hot dogs, chips, and water. Um, and it's free. Okay, so you don't have to pay $30. Councilman Austin, you got to pay $30. This one is free. Um, and I'm asking all community people to come out and please help us. 
I attended the Cinco de Mayo. I didn't walk. I was a vendor. I worked for my granddaughter this weekend, and it really was a nice affair. The wind was high, but it was a nice affair. Um, and one of the things that one of the, a couple people came up to me and was telling me, why can't we have something at Joy Park every weekend? And I said, because we got to learn how to act. Okay, when we learn how to appreciate stuff, we can get stuff. There was no type of arguing, anything going on. And the place was full. Mm -hmm. It was full. I mean, I looked and I'm like, oh, this is a lot of people. Mm -hmm. So if we really want our city to grow, you're right, Councilman Ostash, we got to take it back. All, the, all of the council understand it's time to take our city back. And the only way we're going to take it back is we got to work together. If we can't work together, we're not going to do this. Together we stand, divided we fall. Thank you so much. Madam Clerk. Mayor, the next uh, item on our agenda is reports from the city manager. Thank you. Uh, first, I had invited Renee Johnston, who's the chair of the ARPA advisory committee, to um, give an update from the committee. So I see she's here and she can step up to the podium. Thank you. <clears throat> Good evening, members of city council, Mayor Moore, Mayor Potan Balls, and Manager Morales. My name is Renee Johnston. I'm with the Saginaw Community Foundation, but this evening I am wearing my City of Saginaw ARPA Advisory Committee hat. Um, thank you for allowing me to come here this evening to just give you a very quick update. Um, first of all, let me just say hats off to all of you for agreeing to hire Guidehouse to help facilitate this process. Um, they definitely have offered up some uh, validity to the overall process and um, have really brought the committee together um, to work cohesively. Let me also say that the members that were chosen to serve on this committee um, are all very committed individuals. They very much care about their responsibility in serving on this committee and are all doing a very fine job. Let me just say that we have met as a committee, we've met four times. Um, a fifth time will be this <coughs> Thursday. And over those four meetings, um, the first one being a, a quick introduction by Guidehouse as to um, how the ARPA uh, dollars can be utilized and then getting to, uh, to know the other members of the committee. Uh, the next meeting was to focus uh, specifically on the five priority areas that City Council identified. So we were educated on those, um, those five priority areas, and then we were asked to um, break them down even more um, so that we know exactly what might fit under each of those five priority areas. Uh, the next meeting after that, we reviewed that breakdown, um, and then we wanted to make sure that we didn't have any missing gaps, just to make sure that we clearly are looking at all the areas that might fit under each of those priority areas. And then our fourth meeting, um, first of all, we spent time with uh, Dr. Ramat Roberts. We invited him to come and speak with us so that we were educated on how they were using their ESSER dollars to see how um, they were going to address education, being that education was definitely an area that came up in some of our conversations. So we thought it would be wise for us to know how the school district is going, going to consider using some of their dollars, um, mainly so we could see um, how we would not utilize some of our dollars to support education, but more importantly, how we might be able to leverage both dollars, the ESSER dollars as well as ARPA dollars to support education. And then with the remaining time of that meeting, we was used for Guidehouse to train members of the committee as to how we were gonna take the ARPA proposal process on the road. So you have to know that we have identified, each committee member has identified a handful of venues that we will take this ARPA process presentation throughout the community or throughout the city of Saginaw with the goal of making sure that every resident in the city of Saginaw is familiar with the process and feels as though that they can partake in the process. And so, in fact, I've had three of those meetings, one of them this evening at um, Unity in the Community Neighborhood Association. You have to know that um, the process we want to make sure people feel is easy to complete. Um, the, uh, of course, there is a portal um, that can be found on saginaw-mi-.com. Um, there is the application that will be found on that website, but we also have paper copies of that application. 
So people can, uh, as we take this presentation on the road, we can provide paper copies um, and uh, people can utilize that venue. But we are definitely encouraging people to consider the online portal to submit their applications. But the key to this process, once again, is that every city resident feels as though they can partake in the process. The application allows for basic ideas. So there are 10 basic questions. Most of them are just asking for contact information because we want to make sure that we as committee members, as we review these proposals and ideas, we have a way to reach out if we need clarifying information. So that's uh, half of the first section of the application. The, the rest of the application is just asking for basic information of the idea. So not a full-blown pr proposal in that sense, but an idea. The second half of the application does allow for people that want to provide full budgets and full proposals, and therefore they can, um, they can attach a document that has a full-blown proposal. I want to address that in a second because I know everybody's aware of the fact that um, when we earlier announced that projects would be accepted by um, City Council, we, we did reach out to those individuals that had already submitted proposals and a representative from Guidehouse and myself met with 25 of those individuals last Friday to make sure that they were fully aware as to how they resubmit their proposals on the portal. And you have to know that every member of this committee is equipped and ready to help any resident, including those that already submitted proposals. We want to help anybody that doesn't feel comfortable or confident in how they submit those proposals. So we are equipped to do that. The deadline, as you may know, to submit all proposals and ideas is May 31st. Once we um, receive those proposals, Guidehouse will help us put each of those ideas and proposals uh, under each of those priority areas. And then at that point in time, the committee will then review all that information and prepare to give a proposal to City Council for you to consider. Thank you. I think I've covered everything. Do you have any questions? Do we have any questions? I got one question. Yes. How did uh, they, you guys contacted 25 people that had previous put in application? We, more than 25. We contacted everybody that we had proposals okay. for. Okay, okay, good. We had 25 of them that actually attended the meeting on Friday. Okay, good. Mm -hmm. So there will be no... Yes, Mr. Copeland, you can speak. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, thank you, Mayor Moore. Um, wait, Mayor Moore, may I address our, yes, our manager speaker? Good. Yes, you may. <laughs> thank you. Mm -hmm. um, will there not be the presentation portion? It would just be the portal, and then you all review, and then it comes to us for recommendations? There is not a presentation portion. Okay. Once again, if we, have, if we need any clarifying information, we will contact the contact person for those proposals. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any questions on this end? I just want to thank the committee for doing the fine work because uh, the city council couldn't do it all, but we're going to appreciate you guys bringing your proposals back to us, you know, because you guys are doing some investigation and taking a good look at it, and we appreciate that. Well, thank you. And I want you all to know that even though there's some public comments at the committee me meetings that people wonder why it's taken a long time, but even in the third uh, educational sessions that I've done over the past week, um, we've gotten a lot of compliments. You have to know that this process is a good process and people are starting to really recognize why we were taking the steps that we were doing, so thank you. Yes. Quick comment, Mayor, thank you. So, Renee, I've attended two of the I've attended a couple of the meetings, and I missed the last one because I was out of town. But I do plan to come in again, and I encourage my colleagues. It's really good to come and watch the meeting take place. It's, it was fascinating to watch the interaction. There's 15 members, in that and to watch David do what he does. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it can kind of go off a little bit, but then David knows just how to bring it back, and then he'll also say we're going to address that in a few slides. It's it's really been good for me to see this whole thing lay out. So thank you. Thank you. You guys are doing a great job. Thanks. Yes, sir. Um, where are the meetings posted? So the community, where can mm -hmm. I get that information? So it's on the website. So where, you've, where the portal is, there's another page that has um, the meetings. The portal website, not the city website. The portal website, correct. Perfect. They're on the city website. And the city website as well, and yes. the clerk's office. Perfect, thank you. Mm -hmm. And please note that there are public meetings as well as not non-public meetings. So, um, and by non-public, there could be some organizations that are using board meetings for some of those sessions. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. Any more questions? Yeah. Just a, thank you. Just a quick question for, or just actually a quick comment actually, because you mentioned the city website. If you have access 
to the internet and you can go to the city website under the ARPA tab. There is a ton of information, including their minutes and things that they're going over. Thank you. That's all I have. Yes. Thank you. What are what is being done in regards to uh, making sure uh, or trying to attempt to make sure that persons that um, don't have computers or the wherewithal uh, to find these meetings, what other avenues are you all taking to be sure that people that are not uh, computer savvy, et cetera, may get this information and know about what's going on in these meetings? So you have to know that each of these committee members were told up front that we have a responsibility to make sure we represent the voice of the community. So I know there have been a couple times where we've questioned whether or not we've engaged everybody or every resident. That is upon us. If we think that there is somebody, if we know of a, whether it's a neighborhood or a group of individuals that are not informed, it's on us to make sure that they are. As well as, in fact, the, at the Unity and the Community um, Neighborhood Association meeting, I, went, I more or less said, if you need help, putting this information in the portal or even filling out the paper form, I myself as a committee member would help out with that process. So that really is on us to make sure that individuals are aware and can complete the process and know where the meetings are. So how are you doing that? That's what my question would be. How, so were you just saying just word of mouth? Word like of mouth. yourself mm -hmm. would tell people in your neighborhood or? Definitely. Okay, mm -hmm. and you spoke about the private meetings. How private are those meetings? Like I said, uh, for example, Covenant, um, two of us are on the Covenant board, so Covenant board meetings are not public meetings, So, but we were using that as an audience to make sure that they are aware, because there are individuals on that board that live in the city of Saginaw or may have activities that could benefit the city of Saginaw that they may be interested uh, in submitting a proposal, or they may know of other people, once again, that word of mouth, they may know of people that need to be aware of the process and they can help share that information. So we're using all venues, whether public or private, to make sure we're sharing this information. Okay. Thank you very much. Miss mm -hmm. Johnson, I thank you. Thank you. I, I kept hearing, and I haven't been to the meetings because I trust you guys. Um, the worst thing in the world is to oversee something that you put out there. Mm -hmm. So for me, I trust you. I trust Guide House. Mm -hmm. um, no more questions. Thank you very, very much. Thank you for this opportunity. Thank you, Renee, and uh, thanks to all the committee members for doing the work. And if you haven't gone to the, any of the meetings, I, I do encourage you. As they're very efficient. They have had their time set up and their schedule, and they get through it in a timely manner. And I know, as Renee mentioned, they've already done several uh, meetings uh, out in the community. And uh, we do have uh, the portal questions and application uh, in paper format, and we have it in Spanish as well. So it's available in both of those formats. And um, just to show how the committee is, is taking their role in evaluating everything. If you recall, uh, several meetings ago, we talked about city projects that um, are potentially ARPA funded. Um, we're going, the city is going to present to the committee as well. So they would, uh, the, the meeting on May 19th, city department heads will be talking about the projects that were on that list. Um, we're not going through the portal, but we are presenting, but uh, we also encourage um, anybody to submit ideas so council members I know a few of you have talked to me about ideas in particular uh, that can be put in into uh, you can put those into the portal as well and um, if you haven't had a chance to look at those questions um, that was a good collaborative effort because the, the committee and guide house and city staff worked on that and that online entry was again developed by our technical services staff so uh, the ability that technical services has to do that programming has really helped us um, through a lot of this process as well and, and really saves us money in the long run so um, we'll be uh, at that meeting on the 19th and several department heads will be there so this uh, we do have another presentation uh, this evening as well and uh, first I, I want to 
thank um, Ms. Jones, uh, Director of Office of Management and Budget, and her staff uh, for putting together the budget once again. It is quite an effort to balance everything with all of our funds and the resources that we have coming in. And uh, I know most of you know, but this is a five or six month effort that they go through beginning in late December, early January, if not before that. So Yolanda. Okay. Well, good evening, Mayor, Mayor Pro Tem, Council Members, and City Manager Morales. Um, tonight, we'd like to give you a quick overview of the fiscal year 23 budget, as well as review um, with you the budget schedule. With me tonight, I have Charlene Orange. She's our new addition. She's the budget analyst for the department. So just to go over the, the schedule, on April 25th, you receive electronic uh, email with the budget document included. And then on May 6th, you received um, the presentation, not only from myself, but from Phil Carwatt on uh, rubbish fund, streets, not streets, but water and sewer. <clears throat> so going forward, um, tonight is our first session to discuss the uh, budget. We plan on having a public hearing on the 23rd with adoption on the 23rd. Um, this information is available here at the city in the city clerk's office, but it's also will be online after tonight at our city's website at sagnall-mi.com. Um, emails or citizen comments can be directed to myself. Um, my phone number is listed, 989-759-174, or you can email me at yjones at sagnall-mi.com. So <clears throat> let's talk about the budget. So I know that the budget is kind of overwhelming. Um, if you look at the budget overview on pages 31 through 59, it will provide you a summary of all their funds and the changes to the city. Um, this budget continues to reflect um, our uh, commitment to quality services, to the residents, to everyone per by preserving the organization's long-term financial goals. Um, the total citywide budget is projected to be $134.1 million. Um, this is basically $1.7 million increase or roughly 1% increase from the previous year. The largest increase will be realized in your water um, operation and maintenance funds by 3.2 million or about 9% due to the allocation of the 2021 uh, water supply system revenue bonds. Um, these uh, monies will be used for planned construction projects and equipment. We will also see increases in personnel complement, and this is due to uh, new additions or new positions that will be as much needed for the city that will be added to the budget, as well as restructuring the process system control division within the water and sewer funds. We will see a 4% overall increase to active health care. And there will be a slight increase to retiree health care. However, this will be offset by the utilization of our Medicare Advantage program during the fiscal year. Um, there will be a $3 million increase to our pension obligation citywide for fiscal year 23. And so just to give you a little information, during fiscal year 22, um, the city re our pension assets which resulted in a stabilization of our portfolio and that, that was giving it a level effect for the assets. And so annually, we will be budgeting $19 million for pension for the next 25 years. The addition of the American Rescue Plan Act funds were added, and which is a basically a carryover of what you've already approved in this fiscal year. We also will see increases to technical services IS and GIS, and these increases are related to the computer software as well as training and development. The city will also realize increases in the self-insurance fund and the workers' comp fund, and this is due to increases to insurance rate nationwide. What the budget does not reflect is the recently council-approved collective bargaining agreement changes. The budget does reflect normal step and longevity increases. A budget adjustment will be completed on around July 1st to recognize this change in the collective bargaining agreement. The general fund for fiscal year 23 will be roughly 38.75 million, and this is a 955,000 increase from the previous year. Um, Non-general fund does make up 71% of the total citywide budget. So what I wanted to also show, and you've seen it in the bigger presentation, is the, over the last five years, you're seeing a steady increase to not only the general fund, but also 
citywide. There's a couple challenges that are facing the city. Some are good, some are bad. Um, one of the challenges that we're facing and have been discussed quite a bit is our water and sewer lead and copper galvanizing line replacement. And the fiscal year 23 proposed budget continues to address funding for both water and sewer operations for the replacement of lead and copper galvanizing lines. This is a challenging project, but the city will continue to evaluate the water and wastewater infrastructure and address these issues proactively. Other post-employee benefits known as OPEB and pension liabilities also still has an effect on us. Um, funding for OPEB and pension remains a major concern for the city and the budget continues to address funding of these liabilities. The fiscal year 23 budget allocates funds towards both obligations. And it should be pointed out, again, during fiscal year 22, the city did re amortize the pension assets. I also bring up the American Rescue Plan Act funds. Um, the city administration, city council, and the council and the ARPA advisory committee continues to work through the process of allocating funds to the city council ARPA goals and objectives, which are youth and family, neighborhood preservation and beautification, health initiatives, economic development, and housing. The allocation of these funds will remain a priority for review and approval during fiscal year 23. It's anticipated the allocation and spending of these funds will begin within this fiscal year. And keeping in mind that all funds must be obligated by December 31st of 2024 and expended by December 31st of 2026. So I'm going to move on to showing, looking at the total budget from a resource allocation. Again, this is a $134.1 million budget, and the pie chart represents how much of each fund type makes up it. The general fund represents roughly 29%. Special revenue funds represent roughly 18%. The largest part of the budget is represented within the enterprise fund of roughly 47%. And then internal service funds represents roughly 6%. And then the fiduciary funds is less than 1%. So let's look at the budget from the fund type. Again, the funds accounting for, uh, the general fund accounts for basically 29% of the total citywide budget. And as previously mentioned, the, the general fund is approximately 38.75 mil million, and this again is an increase of 955,000. So the question is, why did it go up? So we have the addition of a grant administrator to the office of the city manager, which is offset by revenues, uh, grant revenues that we still are receiving. We have the uh, additional funds added to the election division for we have upcoming elections for fiscal year 23. Employment agency fees go up for OMB for the assistance to the department for various projects, as well as this individual working with the Saginaw Economic Development Corporation. In the fire department, we add a deputy fire marshal, as well as we're seeing like various increases in departmental supplies, insurance, information management charges, utilities across the board is going up. Fuel is going up, um, dues and repairs to the various stations. In the Department of Neighborhood Services, we have lease payments for the lease vehicles that we have. In the Department of Public Services, funds were um, required for the Michigan Ford Buyback Program. So we've brought a couple council communications to you with regards to purchasing vehicles and then selling them back to the Ford and then buying them again. So we're, we're getting the money from the uh, Ford and then repurchasing the vehicle. So that's within the budget and it's also a revenue source. Another part of the increase in this department will be realized in the debt service payments on various equipments and vehicles that are part of the various installment contracts that we have. <clears throat> in other general fund expenditures, there's an appropriation of uh, debt service payments for the Saginaw County drain assessment. That's something new for this year. And then we have a higher appropriation for retiree health care. To offset some of these increases will be reductions in, in the um, other general fund expenditures will be a reduction to the allocation from the general fund to unfunded liabilities, a reduction in the amount allocated for unemployment, and the Saginaw Housing Commission health care contribution. And the Department of Neighborhood Services, you're going to see a decrease in the professional services because we're completing the master plan. 
in community public safety, police, and fire, a, you'll see a decrease in their capital outlay due to the departments not allocating funds from the Tr Rutledge Trust Fund. So we last year we had budgeted to use restricted fund balance for the Rutledge Trust Fund. We're not doing that this year. Moving on to the special revenue funds. Special revenue funds account for proceeds from specific revenue sources that are legally restricted to expenditures for, for specific purposes. Again, this fund type equates about 18% of the total citywide budget. <clears throat> and that actually is projected to be 24.34 million or $1.6 million reduction or about 6% reduction from the previous year. And so looking at this fund, the special revenue funds, these, this is largely due to, and there's multiple reasons, but the major and local street funds, they're decreasing because our gas and weight tax monies decrease due to our population. So that we, that's something that we had talked about before, that your state shared revenues and gas and weight would be affected due to our population decrease. Yep. The rubbish collection fund decreases because of planned capital purchases. Our downtown development authority, two th our, our DDA 2011, we see a decrease due to a projected decrease in uh, property tax revenues or personal property tax revenues as well as the use of fund balance. Um, police justice grant it is completed in fiscal year 23. And again, the larger presentation outlines like the different changes. Um, the coronavirus emergency supplemental fund also decreases because the grant is completed in fiscal year 22. Community development block grant decreases as a result of a reduction to the allocation for CARES Act. So we have, we had only had a couple years to spend that money and we're in the process of spending it. So we're seeing a decrease in their budget. The Black Grant Home Program, it decreases in the funds allocated for grants disbursement. And then the Saginaw Economic Development Corporation, it decreases because they use, uh, they're using less fund balance. These reductions are offset by increases though. We're seeing an increase in the public safety millage fund, and this is due to an increase in real property revenue. CDBG residential loans is an increase as a result of the additional funds that are, that are being allocated for the city's housing rehabilitation program. And the addition of the American Rescue Plan Act, like I said, in fiscal year 23 budget reflects the allocation of $860,000. And this allocation represents a carryover of council approved funds from the current fiscal year into the next year. And these were allocated for administrative costs as well as the contract with Guidehouse. The next fund type is our enterprise funds. Our enterprise funds account for services provided to the general public on a user charge basis. Again, this fund type represents 47% of the total citywide budget. Enterprise funds for fiscal year 23 is projected to be 62.96 or $96 million rounded. And this represents $2.3 million increase or roughly 4% increase. The increase in the um, enterprise funds is largely due to the $3.2 million increase to the water operation and maintenance funds. And again, as previously stated, this is due to, uh, to uh, various reasons, but largely for the use of the 2021 revenue supply bond and they're going to be allocating those monies towards engineering services, cleaning supplies, insurance costs, computer software, parts and supplies in our process system control, fuel, street and road materials, professional services for our paving patching, chemicals, chemicals also went up significantly this year, that's affecting us into the next year, utilities and our water and sewer costs. Again, on the revenue side, you're gonna see an appropriation of the bond proceeds from the use of the bond. Furthermore, what you're also gonna see in the budget <clears throat> is the restructuring of the process system control division and both water and sewer under the depart to go under the Department of Technical Services. Within the restructuring, the instrument 
Transportation and Control Administrator will be reclassified to the Assistant Director Instrument Control Administrator. So that person will be reporting under technical services. As well as the Instrument and Control Technicians 1 and 2 to an Instrument Control Specialist. So those two positions, those positions have been reclassified and now are specialists and they too will be reporting directly to the Department of Technical Services. To offset this increase in this fund type is a reduction to the sewer operation and maintenance fund, about roughly $910,000. And again, this decrease is due to planned capital purchases and debt service payments. <clears throat> Moving on to the next fund type is our internal service funds. Our internal service funds accounts for goods and services provided to one department by another on a cost reimbursement basis. And again, this represents 6% of the total citywide budget. Internal service fund for fiscal year 23 is projected to be 8.02 million or an increase of $74,000 from the approved 22 budget. This net increase in, internal, in these internal service funds is largely due to we see increases in technical services GIS for training and development as well as software, an increase to technical services IS due to, to the purchase of computer software, as well as the restructuring of the department um, with the process system controls from water and sewer. And so with that, there's a reclassification of the assistant director of technical services to the assistant director system administrator. So you're just changing titles and this, both the two positions, assistant directors are kind of on a level. You also see increases in the motor pool operation funds as it relates to increase in charge for services, as well as recognizing revenues from the Michigan Ford buyback replacement program. So we did this program in different funds and you're actually seeing it throughout the, the budget. And as I previously mentioned, the self-insurance fund and the workers' comp fund increased significantly due to increasing <laughs> insurance rates in the national market as a result of the nationwide economic conditions. So those, those two funds were affected this year. And they're affected not only that in the next year, but in the current year. To offset these increases, you will see reductions in the public works building as a result of the restructuring of the facilities de department um, and Department of Public Services. Th that happened in the current year. That's what we budgeted for the current year restructuring of it, as well as the <coughs> reduction in the radio operation funds. So the city has been putting money for maintenance and replacement to fund this, this radio fund. We are no longer, we have already met our goal per se, on purchasing radios or a new system, so we're no longer char charging for replacement. So the only thing you're having is just the um, maintenance side. <clears throat> the last fund type we have is our call our fiduciary funds. Fiduciary funds counts for the administration of property or assets that are owned by other entities besides the city. So this one represents less than 1% of the total citywide budget. For fiscal year 23, it's projected to be 34,910, and that's the same as it was for the current year. Um, what makes up this fund is basically the cemetery endowment funds, <clears throat> and these funds are legally restricted resources, and are 25% of the cemetery revenues that we collect in the general fund, they are accounted in this fund. So um, these revenues can only be used for cemetery care purposes in accordance with the city charter. So I know I just threw a lot of information at you, <laughs> and I know that is can be quite overwhelming. <laughs> so, like I, in past, I'm we're we understand that, and we're saying that um, we invite city council members to meet with us to discuss any of your questions and concerns that um, you may have. So, if you want to set up a meeting, you can contact the city manager's office, and we can schedule a meeting for you to meet with us. So at this point, if you have any questions, I'd be glad to take them. Yes. <clears throat> I just want to say, Yolanda and your team, um, you are an award-winning team and very, very, very responsible fiscally. So I know there's a lot of people that play a part. I just want to say thank you because 
Um, it takes a lot to cross the T's and dot the I's and make sure that we uh, are doing what we're supposed to do. So you never, you and your team, you, you never disappoint. So thank you. Thank you. Yes. Thank you very much, yes. Ms. Yolanda. Because uh, I know probably after two or three days, I wouldn't see numbers. I'd see moon and stars. <laughs> but um, I did have a couple questions. Sure. Uh, I have a lot of questions. I'm waiting till we can meet. Okay. But um, I kind of missed a little bit. If you could explain uh, to me when you say something about uh, Saginaw Housing Health Care. Okay, so the city went back in, I think it was 2004, in which uh, the Saginaw Housing Commission split from the city, right. and we had shared employees. Mm -hmm. So at that, anybody who retired from the Saginaw Housing Commission, the city pays a portion of their health care, retiree health care. Okay, and my other question, um, when you speak of the two, well, the two places here that were you the fiduciary of, mm -hmm. so are those dollars uh, combined into city dollars at all, or you're just <clears throat> responsible for disbursement of those dollars to these? Uh, so the cemetery endowment funds, 25% of the general fund revenues that we collect for cemeteries is put over into the endowment funds. Those funds are normally just put into a, a savings account and we really can't do anything with it it's just there we have to it's required to be there by city charter mm -hmm. so that's that's really what what's going on with that okay so any other questions i'll save them thank you so very okay. much for you and your team's hard work thank you i have a question i'm sorry uh, the, the enterprise funds mm -hmm. how are we uh are you guys, uh, the rates going up any because of gas prices and the way the economy is right now? Are we reflecting that with the people who, our customers who we selling our water to? Nah. We're, we're doing a rate study right now. I think they're doing um, a wholesale rate study, I believe, at the same time as they do uh, in-city rate study. So that, it, it, as you know, it runs behind, though. We're looking at actual expenditures. They're, they're, I'm sure in their calculations, they do have a way to put in some of those escalators. Yeah. Do, we, do, we, do we charge our customers less than we, you, the city residents, the people in the city? Well, we don't charge a, we charge a wholesale rate. Okay. So what's built into that rate is not it's not all of the same things that are built into the city rate. So for instance, maintenance and service division is primarily providing service to our residents because they're taking care of the in-city lines, uh, similar to the um, lead and copper project. That's only in the city. We don't do that for outside of the city. So plant operations, water costs, that kind of thing is included in the, the wholesale rate study. When we get the next information, we can have the consultant come to council and give a presentation about what goes into both the in-city rates and the wholesale rates. Thank you. Anyone else? Yolanda's always great job. Thank you. Gee, for you and your team, along with the city manager, Great job. Thank you so much. And thank you, Yolanda. And, and with us, uh, Yolanda did mention the water fund a few times, and, and uh, Mayor Pro Tem Balls did ask some questions about that. So I do want to give you an update on um, some of the issues there. Uh, one issue is, is we do have uh, rising costs, like you said, for fuel, but we also have a scarcity of chemicals that we utilize for treating water, and those prices have been going up. So we're trying to, to see how we can deal with that, but we also have our um, issue with uh, delinquencies. So uh, as you're aware, um, we haven't shut off water for over two years. Um, we had the moratorium that was required by the state. That expired. I think we started doing shutoffs for probably a, a month or less, and then we, we paused that. We've been paused since. So um, on, in July of 2021, we had delinquency of a million dollars in the water fund for collections. 
Um, and that stayed at about a million dollars throughout 2021. Uh, currently, the delinquent balance has grown to $1.6 million. Oh, <laughs> and that is for about just 1,200 accounts. So that's somewhere around 6% of our customers. So 94% of our customers are paying uh, within that 60-day window. However, we have that, that number of customers. We have about, I think, over 18,000 residential water customers. So at, at 1,200 accounts, um, it represents uh, much of that $1.6 million overage. So we do need to address that issue. Um, and we are thinking that we do need to set a date where we go back to our normal operations, uh, likely this summer. And um, we'll look at a number of things to do um, for that before, before we resume that and, and looking at press releases to get the word out there, um, tagging to make sure people know what where they stand, um, giving exemptions if you can provide a proof of application for assistance. There is still assistance out there um, from, a, from a few organizations, so uh, it, we'll try to put that information out there. I think the CAC has, has funding available and probably United Way still has funds available as well. So uh, those are available for, for people to, to go in and make applications. Um, also, payment plans is another thing that we encourage people to make. Um, we, we are finding and uh, talking to um, Finance Director Lori Brown and with, from her staff down there that there are other programs where you can get assistance that our citizens can't get because we don't do shutoffs. Because you have to, there are some state programs that you have to be in danger of being shut off. And um, so they're not eligible for some of those programs when they go to the state to ask about them. So there's some issues with that. Um, but this delinquent amount, 1.6 million, it has to be paid. It's costs that are incurred. So some way we have to get those funds back, whether it's from assistance or people paying it, or um, it gets spread out. And I, I, know, um, I know several of you, I'm sure, have been contacted by some of the other property owners because we do hear a lot from the people who own rental, rental properties too because that falls back on them if it's not paid and, um, and we've had we've had pressure from them for since the moratorium expired so I think we, once um, we'll get more information and, and get some date proposed dates and start putting information out there about that mr. manager mm -hmm. yeah, I just, yes sir. Yeah. I have a question okay just for public clarity 1.6 million delinquent and it's six percent of the Saginaw population that has not paid that about six per, it's over a 60-day period so there are some people that are probably in that 1.6 million that maybe aren't aren't over the 60 days but um, yeah 1200 accounts and we have about 18,000 so 10 percent would be 1800 around 1800 accounts okay um, Go ahead, because now you made me forget what I was going to Oh, I'm sorry. That's all right. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Uh, two questions, I hope, uh, in regards to the water. One is, can we not use any opera dollars in regards to that, or no? Well, I mean... Because I guess I was kind of going along thinking... You know that some of those delinquent accounts would be, you know, the city would be made whole by some of the ARPA dollars. Going well, you could, you you could, you could use ARPA dollars for utility assistance, but there's a, so much other assistance out there already. Okay. Or you could do other program. It, it, you should avail yourself of those other dollars out there mm -hmm. so that you can do other projects in the city. Mm -hmm. But I'm saying it is something that could be looked at possibly. It is possible. So we wouldn't be, okay. So my other one is, of course, they, well, and I won't say that. Um, I have gotten some calls that um, when uh, persons have applied to get help, they were turned down mm -hmm. uh, because uh, for some reason, I guess they feel like there's a moratorium and they can't get cut off. So as some agencies are not helping. So... Is that wrong? What? Nope. Uh, we've heard the same thing because okay. because for some 
some agencies to receive assistance, you have to be in danger of being having your water utility shut off. Mm -hmm. And I think it depends on where you go, but some of them are saying the city isn't shutting water off, so you're not in danger of being shut off. Which so they have the dollars to help, but they're not helping because. Yeah, I okay. think I think those are state dollars, so they probably likely would go to another community then. Okay. All right. Thank you so very much. Have you heard of any surrounding? Uh, communities that are doing what we're doing as far as allowing two years off of paying or anything like that? Not in our county. No. No. Not that I'm aware of. No. Thank you. Yes. Um, Mr. Manager, do you know if I'm not I'm familiar with the program out there, but Michigan Homeowner Assistance Fund, that was for mortgages, utilities. I'm kind of wondering if these programs kind of what we're talking about where because we're not shutting off and they don't qualify do you, does do you know any of the programs that are not specifically not specific, which okay. ones they're always um yeah. even uh, pre-covid there are dollars always available for utility assistance uh i think it's is it um okay that's kind of a catch-22 to, right to some of the state agencies yeah. that even prior to covid there were, were was funds funding available for what to prevent water shutoffs well, thank you for letting me know. I did not know that, that they were not able to qualify because of mm -hmm. the way we're set up right now. Okay, thank you. Yes. Um, well, hopefully we will uh, get back to uh, doing what we got to do to get the citizens to pay their water bills. I mean, that, that's the, the cheapest utility that we all have. And if we don't have no water, we can't. Uh, we got to have water for cooking. We gotta have water for eating. We gotta have water to flush the toilet. And I know it seems like people are taking advantage of the city right now because of that. And we got the pundits come here and complain that uh, we're being crude for uh, leaving their water bills on. I mean, cutting the water off, but yet no one's paying their water bills. That don't make any sense, you know. So I think that we need to do what we need to do as a city to try to get our money to to take care of this situation because this. It's getting to be ridiculous. It went from 1.1 to 1.6 million. That's a half million dollar worth of water bills in one year, two years, year and a half. So um, I, want, I would direct the city manager to do what he needs to do so we can start getting it, getting, even getting them notices so they know their water get cut off and then they can seek some assistance. And the pundits that worry about people getting their water bills cut off, maybe they need to be the ones that assist them with getting the uh, resources to get their water bills uh, taken mm -hmm. care of. Thank you. You know, um, United Way is still yet taking application um, at, along with Saginaw Community Action Center. Mm -hmm. uh, we had them here before. I don't think we're going to do that again. Um, but I know that we've got to do something because mm -hmm. we're steady going backwards. So United Way and Community mm -hmm. Action Center, please. Or stop in at the water department and make arrangements. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, we don't want to seem like we just want to cut you off. Mm -hmm. However, we got to do something. Okay, and imagine? then one last thing I did want to mention because it was mentioned to me prior to the meeting. So we had our proclamation for public service recognition week and we we did invite the presidents for all five of our unions to come but we did neglect to have our non-union personnel represented so um we have our whole budget our whole budget office is non-union so it's not just department heads it's our whole budget office our whole hr office our assistant directors and our chiefs and our our police chief our fire chief and all the other department heads and i'll tell you there's never um never a time when I have a question about anything that's on a weekend or any time that those department heads or the chiefs are not getting me information, um, whether it's about fires, um, uh, uh, issues, police issues, or water main breaks, or water plant issues. So I wanted to, um, to give a recognition of those employees as well. So with that, that concludes the management update. Any other questions? Hearing none, Madam Clerk. Mayor, our next order of business is the consent agenda.
The agenda has been available at City Hall and on the city webpage and on SGTV, Channel 191. I need a motion leaving room for exception. So moved. It's been, it's been moved in support. Exception. Any exceptions? Any exceptions? I'm sorry, any exceptions? Exceptions. Fast oh, <laughs> we, we got it. We got it. Go hard. Please for the vote. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed signify by saying nay. Madam Clerk. We are now at Boards, Commission, and Committee reports. Do we have any board meetings uh, that it, the Boards Commission that someone might will need to report on? Yeah, I was part on the uh, airport board. We met uh, a couple of weeks ago, and everything's going to be fine. Uh, is going fine out there. They even uh, looking for different carriers and stuff to expand. So uh, I think the airport is doing real good out there right now. Right? Okay. Even the chairman thinks so. <laughs> Anybody else? Yes. Thanks, Mayor. Um, just to report on the Planning Commission, I do sit on that with our Honorable Mayor and uh, the Planning Commission, uh, our city staff, Bob Galeen and uh, Cassie Miller from Second Our Future, they did get us a draft copy of the master plan, so we've had an opportunity to, to take a look at that, and um, I did like what I saw. Anyone else? Madam Clerk. Mayor, we are now at appointment of Board and Commission members. I need a motion to approve one and two, so leaving moved. rooms for exceptions. So moved. Support. It's been moved in support. Any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Madam Clerk. We are now at ordinance introduction, and we do have one tonight, and it's an ordinance to amend Chapter 95, Trees, Shrubs, and Plants, of Title IX General Regulations by amending Section 95.03, Abatement of Nuisances. I need a motion to introduce. So moved. Support. It's been moved and support. Any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed say nay. This ordinance will be laid over under the Charter Provision. Madam Clerk. Mayor, we are now at ordinance consideration adoption. Our first one is ordinance to amend the official city map to vacate entire blocks 12, 13, 19, 20, 27, 28, 34, and 35, and fractional blocks of 29, 26, 21, 18, 33, and 30 of Williams and Little's edition. I need a motion to adopt. So moved. Support. It's been moved and supported. Any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed say nay. Madam Clerk. Our second um, ordinance tonight is to amend Chapter 153 Zoning Code of Title 15 Land Usage by adding Section 153.534 Definitions and amending Section 153.537 Regulation of Structures Section 153.538, Historic District Commission. Section 153.539, Procedure for Review of Plans. Section 153.540, Appeals. Section 153.541, Establishing New Districts and Identifying Historic Resources, Modifying or Eliminating Existing Districts and by adding section 153.545 title violation fine payment of cost and section 153.546 acquisition of historic resources i need a motion to adopt so moved support it's been moved and support any discussion hearing none all those in favor signify by saying aye aye, aye. all those opposed nay madam clerk Mayor, we're at miscellaneous business. We do have an item on here for a closed session discussing pending litigation in the Bradley case. I need a motion to approve with, and I need a roll call. I'm sorry, I need, need I need a, a roll call you vote. You need a motion. I need a motion, then I need a roll call vote. 
So moved. Support. It's been moved in support. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed say nay. We need a roll call vote on this. Okay. Okay. Roll call. Council Member Scherzer. Yes. Council Member Ostash. Yes. Lords is absent. Council Member o Copeland. Yes. Council Member Lamar Sylvia. Yes. Council Member Williams. Yes. Council Member Bench. Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Balls. Yes. Mayor Moore. Yes. We have eight yes and one absent. I need a motion to come out of closed session. So moved. Support. support. He's been moved in support. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 I need a motion. I got uh, Madam Mayor, I move that we approve the legal counsel recommendation as discussed in closed session regarding the Bradley case. Support. It's been moved in support. All those in favor <coughs> signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Is there any other business? Yes, ma'am. Is there any other business? Yes. All right. <clears throat> so I'd like counsel to refer to the April 26th email from the city manager. But I have a motion. Um, I move that we provide premium COVID hazard pay to the following city employees with the following guidelines as recommended. That the eligibility period be from March 23rd, 2020 to March 22nd, 2021. And based on 2,080 hours, employees who've worked 519 hours or less receive 25%. 520 to 139 hours receive 50%. 1,040 hours to 15, uh, 1,569 hours receive 75%, and anyone over 1,570 hours receive 100%. So, in summary, the motion would cover up to $3,000 max allocation, which totals $864,750 in ARPA funds. There's a motion on the floor. I need a second. I'll second. It's been second. Any discussion? You should have received this email some time ago from the city manager. He gave us three proposals. Yeah. Is this the lesser one? It's the middle one. Uh, it's the middle, the middle. Midway. And what was the less? What was the lesser one? Twenty-five hundred. Twenty-five hundred. Right. And then I think the other one. Thirty-five. No discussion. Is, yeah, is other cities doing this? I mean, how are we looking right now around the cities? Uh, so mostly, us? there have been counties that have done this. Um, Saginaw County did do it. Similar amount of money, I think. Um, they were probably they were at thirty-seven fifty. I think they're the only one in our region that I know of that that did it. Um, but it's real similar to this plan. They did a percentage and everybody was paid the same. Um, the other cities in, in the Great Lakes Bay region, Midland is not doing this. Um, they have significantly less ARPA money. I think their total is about 8 million. And Bay City has 30 plus million, I think, and they, they are not doing it. I checked with their city manager at this point, they're not. Uh, providing hazard pay with ARPA funds. Um, they did do, she stated they did a, a different kind of a premium recently though with general fund money. We did check with Guidehouse and I think, um, I think I sent that to council too. Yeah. About mm -hmm. probably around 10% of their clients that are doing it, but there are some other ones in process too. So we call it for the, yes. And this is coming out of the 25 million that we've already set aside for a city. No. Well, I think um, we want to do it strategically. We're going to be meeting with Guidehouse about funding the different projects this, I think it's this week. So um, wherever it comes from, we could probably account for that when we provide you the information. So right now it's not coming out of the money that we already set aside. It could, it could, we'll have to, I think when we do the reporting, we'll have to look at where, where we are with our spending and, and what, where it makes the most sense to come from with. 
I think in the long run we would we will have to set up a spending plan for all of the funds. I'm still so if we use up all of our twenty five million for city projects and we still approve this, it would then have to if all of that money is used this money we're setting aside now would then have to tap into the money that we have set aside for the community. Remember, we, we reserved 25 million. That's an estimate. So right now we know we have, I think, we just have the first two years. So that's not 25 million. Right. So you're going to be taking roughly a million dollars out of that amount that's already accounted for because we have to recalculate that every year. So probably that's where you would initially do it. But you're going to, over the long term of ARPA, you're going to have to, to balance that out to make sure that you do all the expenditures. Mm -hmm. That makes sense? Just because of the... Because I want to support it. I just don't want it to come in back on us that it eventually comes out of the additional money and not the one that we set aside. That's the only... I, I support this move. I just want us to make sure that it comes out of the $25 million we've already approved and set aside rather than the remaining amount that we've been sharing with the community that that would right yeah I mean we can do that initially it, it, but it is more complicated than that in the long term got a motion on the floor yep. Bill. Mark another Bill. question Councilman yeah. yes um, just to kind of piggyback on what Councilman Copeland is saying is that is exactly what I saw people talking about in the community is they when we start talking about the 25 million, even the premium pay they wanted to make, they said that money, they want to see that money into the community. So what, that's a good proposal that you're saying. Make sure it's I, out of that. Try, I'll try tell you, I've received, since the, yeah. since I talked to council about it, I haven't received any comments about paying premium pay, period. Yeah. No. It's, it's all been negative, but. Exactly, that's what I've received. So that's why yeah. I wanted, I was, I was hoping that this could possibly just wait because so far, I would think no other city was doing this, and I want to support those who work for the city, but at the same time, I want to do it right. I want to do it right because I, re I believe we all deserve something, but at this point, um, I just... Well, and that's part of, the, part of the planning of the funds that I was talking about. One of the... We've been working with Guidehouse to make sure we're... Our I, I would commend council because I know you've been more restrained about spending the funds because it, it is a long planning process and one of the things that uh, we want to work with Guidehouse to do is to make sure that we leverage the funds properly because there is a lot of other money coming in from the state of Michigan so mm -hmm. and potentially some other places as well that have for instance part of ARPA the uh, economic development administration received a lot higher allocation than they have and everyone's aware that we did um, submit requests for community projects to both of our centers so um, we want to take that kind of approach where we're looking at the long term long term planning of all of the funds so where do you come from initially I think you're probably right uh, Councilman Copeland so if you're going to do it now um, would probably report it out of the revenue loss portion mm -hmm. uh, of our funds. But, I mean, to, also, to, but to clarify a little bit, mm -hmm. I don't see funds coming from any other source uh, for premium pay either. I nice. don't think, I don't think the state is going to be doing any more of that for local units. From, from what we've seen, it would be more economic development type projects or, or different things like that that could pretend, or um, uh, utility assistance, different things like that could be coming from this. State, but I don't think this category would have anything additional. Yes, Councilman, may approach your boss. Um, do we have 20, we got 25 million already? Well, you, you made that commitment to reserve the revenue loss. Okay. We have two years of calculated and I think it's about six million dollars a year somewhere five between five and six so you have accounted for about 12 million okay so do we have that in the bank here or somewhere i'll be drawing interest on that money That's yeah I yeah yeah so, so what can we do with the interest money with, with 
Saying the reason why I'm straight. asking, because the way I'm looking at it, uh, the amount of money, $800,000 that we plan on, it, that we, if we give that money to uh, the workers, it seems like we might be able to recoup that money with interest. Not with the rates local government gets. Uh, we, we, get, we get limited interest rates, but for interest, you can use the, you can use the interest. I believe the rules say you can use it for anything. Same with program income. So if you look at long-term projects that you want to do, if there's some kind of low interest loans or something like that, that becomes program income. But you could use interest revenue for pretty much anything. Government entities are very restricted on what we can invest in because we're not allowed to put principal at risk in that manner. So you usually end up with CD type rates, which yeah. um, I know Councilman Ostash can probably tell you what those <laughs> rate rates are up. at this point. They're not they're not high, but but we we are allowed to to gain interest from that. So what I'm so, uh, what I'm trying to get to see is, do we think we can recoup eight hundred thousand dollars within by twenty twenty six if we approve this today with the amount of money that we got coming in? I'm wondering if. You think we can recoup that eight hundred thousand in interest? I, I don't think you'll get eight hundred thousand in interest from those funds. Okay. Well, how much you think we can get? I mean, you uh, you a math major. <laughs> in interest from this, um, uh, boy, the days that the city has received significant interest are pretty much long gone. From right. it, it give you an idea, we typically do have cash and reserves of in excess of $30 million, but several years ago we modified a lot of our accounts because the fees, the banking fees are higher than the interest you're receiving. Mm -hmm. So we utilize sweep accounts and different methods to make sure we don't have banking fees. Right. And we kind of trade off that interest, but we have limited and we have a number of investments or other funds, but it's not, nothing is, nothing is high interest that, um, that local governments can participate in. I think once you guys, once council gets these recommendations that, that we're hoping to get from the committee in June, um, you'll be able to start pushing more of that money out into projects. Uh, but I, I meant to mention, mention this under management update, but if you go into the portal and you look at the ideas, a lot, anyone can put ideas into that portal, but one of the selections is the city is going to do it. now. I don't know if we've communicated that to the yeah, committee, but, but we, may, we may have limited capacity to do some of those if, mm -hmm. if it goes back on the city. But, but I think you, you'll be pushing more of those funds out um, in any case later this summer. So uh, you, won't want to, you won't be sitting on those, that money for too long. Yes, Council So, um... I'm kind of leaning toward very much so, uh, Councilman uh, Copeland, but um, if this vote was delayed, would that give us, would we have more, would we be able to say where those dollars would come from at a later date? I and mean, you can say now, you, you can take it from revenue loss. I mean, you can designate that in your your resolution if you okay. want to um, you'll just have to in the reporting capacity you want to make sure that you spend all of the money on time so you want to make sure you're pulling out of okay. categories that are capable okay that's that's what I was what I was getting at okay thank you mm -hmm. yes. also if you make I think um, the motion was complete but I would exclude um, the city manager and city council uh, from that. of course City Council and City Manager. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, well, that, that was the question I had sent to Tim after he sent the, the information out was, you know, which portion it was going to come out of. And based on the public response I, that we saw, rightly or wrongly, I think when we set aside the $25 million for re revenue loss, there was much, much of an attitude of, oh, well, they just paid themselves. And so I would, and it's not fair or right, but um, in voting for this, if we were to vote for this, um, I would definitely want it to come out of the lost revenue side, regardless of how much that complicates things. Um, and I don't know if it would be appropriate to make a motion to amend um, to include that in there, that the <coughs> that shouldn't be paid, it would come out of the revenue loss portion. 
five. Is that a motion? Yes, that is a motion. I second that. Let, let me just say this. I, I think everybody loses sight of what that money was for. The money was for the city. And so the city has got to recruit. Just because, and, and I've asked city manager Morales, if we don't spend our money and it looks like the city doesn't spend their money, what would they do? The answer was, just like CBDG, they throw it in the pot and the people who got money would get some more money and hopefully they'll spend it. So I, I, I think we got to keep that in mind and we did do a resolution which the amendment I think covers it now. Mm -hmm. So there's been, a, there's been moved in second. Which one do I go with the last one? They Let added on. on. We're discussing the amendment, but I want to be clear on that amendment. Does that also include the exclusion of the city manager? Mm -hmm. Yes. And, and the city, city council. council. City council. Yes. And council. Are we voting? So. In a minute. Are we voting now? On the amendment. Unless you have more discussion, that's up to council. Okay. Are we Unless on the has a question. Yes. Clarification. Uh, in the email that we all received from the manager too, though, you also spoke of some of the programs that we actually did during the year for our staff. So there were pro there was uh, additional 80 hours of pay that were added to, and I'm trying to remember the other uh, thing that you all did. There was uh, 40 hours of emergency leave bank for full-time city employees and whatever the normal weekly hours for part-time employees. Wow. And there was um, a public safety due to the state's uh, classification. They were covered under workers' comp, so they didn't utilize leave time if they were ill due to COVID-19. Mm -hmm. So they didn't lose paid time off. We also created a expanded emergency leave bank which allowed essential employees who had to work through a stay-at-home order issued by the governor to earn one hour of comp time for every hour that they worked up to 80 hours between april 1st of 2020 and april 13th of 2020 that created additional leave time bank uh, federal legislation required the city to provide up to 80 hours of additional paid leave time to non-public safety employees mm -hmm. who missed work mm -hmm. due to covid 19 um, and then we did have uh, grants for premium pay for public safety employees, uh, police and fire only. And uh, those employees had an option of keeping their emergency, expanded emergency leave bank, which is the, the comp time type bank, or receiving a thousand hour hazard pay stipend. And um, some employees chose to keep the hours, some employees took the, the did you say a thousand day. hours? It was a thousand dollars. Yeah. Oh, thousand dollars. Yeah, thousand hours. Thousand dollars. <laughs> and then we did have um, the federal government had a, expanded FMLE, FMLA time, which paid employees eighty percent of mm -hmm. their pay if they had a medical condition or stayed home for someone with a medical condition or because they had to care for a dependent child due to uh, school and daycare closures. So those are those are all the items that uh, we did do. Any other questions, Madam Clerk? Do we go back with the second the motion? The amendment. The amendment. The amendment only. Okay, the amendment only. It's been moved and second. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, say nay. Is there any other business? You, you got your main motion main now motion. Yeah, oh. to deal with. We're going back to our main motion. As amended. As amended. It's been moved and second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed say nay. Ayes have it. Is there any other business? Hearing none, I need a motion to adjourn. So moved. Report. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Awesome. Yes. Nay.